All right, Chris Petra here. Thanks so much for coming by. We are working on this beautiful tractor here. We're doing some fun painting. We're going to show you all the details of how you're going to recreate this beautiful Peterbilt tractor. Uh, this is part of a tractor and trailer. This was actually a project that I uh, had a friend of mine call me, asked me if I could paint his uh, 1970 um, Peterbilt tractor. He used to haul uh, long haul um, uh, products across the United States from New Jersey out to California and then back from California to New Jersey. So he um, asked me to create a painting for him. I, I scaled everything, made it a larger version than this. This is a smaller version of what we did for my friend. But in any case, we're going to cover every detail you could possibly imagine. We're going to cover the pencil drawing, how you're just going to use a simple ruler and a photograph like this. So we're going to use this photograph. We're going to set it up above us. So you'll see this in the screen at all times on camera. We're going to have this. Obviously, we're going to be doing the pencil drawing of this tractor. And obviously, we're going to also have our paints. So you're going to see all the washes, the reds, the beautiful blues, you know, the uh, greens for the uh, background colors, um, all the different mixtures, again, of the reds of the tractor, some of the blues, again, for the cools, for the steel, the um, metals of the um, fuel tanks and the battery covers and the steps and the the uh, smokestack and air horns and the front grill of the tractor. We're going to cover all these details. We'll show you everything you would need to know on how to create, recreate this beautiful painting uh, from this photograph. And uh, we'll do it, uh, you know, over the next hour or so. So please grab all your gear, your pencils, your ruler. We're going to even use some stencils. I even have some stencils here that we're going to use. So I'll explain how you can use those stencils to get your tires really accurate by just purchasing a quick stencil for ovals. So these are ellipses. You can get this really inexpensively. Something you'll have in your arsenal as an art, watercolor artist if you ever need to really get something accurate where you're working on maybe something like a um, commission work for somebody, as I did here on this painting. And so I'll show you how I did everything. Again, every step of the way, we're using the Alla Prima method which um, I cover in detail, and again, all the colors, all the washes, all the drawing, everything will be done here, again, over the next couple, or the next hour, or an hour and a half, we'll cover the whole painting. You'll see how we do this. Hope you'll enjoy it. Hope you'll uh, stick uh, here with us, and uh, we'll get started right now. All right, so we're continuing on here. Let's finish up. I think, uh, let me zoom in a little bit. I apologize if I haven't Maybe adjusted my uh, video here a little better. That might be a little bit better to see what I'm doing here. Maybe I can even zoom in a little more like that. All right, the next thing we said we wanted to do was to um, match up our tire with these ovals that we have. I have this again. This is a um, Westcott. It's called a Westcott T-809 small ellipses dash three small ellipse dash three westcott t809 i'm sure you can find this on amazon if not definitely like um blix uh, art supply would probably have this um so anyway let's come over here and we'll look there i think that looks pretty good yeah that's a pretty good match maybe we could see that even better okay so we're going to use the 50 degree that's the third one over from the left. We'll just come down here. We'll put it right where we need it. And we'll use that for our, our ellipse for our tire. Now what we do is, since we have that ellipse, then you can erase it a little bit. You don't want to, you just want to have it as like a guide for your tire. But you don't want to make it too exacting. And then if we look at it, that's actually where the tire is in the light. So there's also the front of the tire, which is sort of under here. So we want to sort of make this like so. Like this. I want to curve that up a little bit like this. Curve this up here. That's where the treads are on the tire. We won't 
really paint those treads in there at all. And then there's a shadow from the fender that goes over the top here. So we're also going to have that that goes over the top like this and curves around this way. Then what we have here is we can take our, now let's take our center of tire, front tire, let's do the center of our front tire so we can go back to our lips here and just kind of eyeball that and say that's about the center right there. And then we come up here and say, well, how up, how far up from the bottom of our painting is the center of this tire? So we go over here. Again, you can use either the metric or, and that is an inch and a quarter up to the center of the hub of that rear tire. Inch and a quarter, like this. Then we could also come over here and try to see if we can match up an ellipse to this here. Now notice this is a lot smaller, so I'm going to have to probably um, use maybe just the top of this, like this. So I'm just going to use this top of this here to get the start of my ellipse, like this that looks pretty good and then I can use the rest to fill in the the bottom portion of that well that's pretty good it's it's pretty close we could and you can also notice this goes out of the picture the tire over here like that and then we have the tires over here there's that's a dual those are d dual tires there there's also the fender over here that goes over the top. And it's not quite to the halfway point, so the fender is a little bit higher than the center of the hub of the tire here. So we're just trying to kind of get ourselves um, pretty good with what we're seeing. And this goes over here like so. Then we have the gas, the diesel tank over here. That's over this way like so. And then we notice again that the center of the hub of the tire all the way across to the center of the hub of the front tire, the front rim, is here. So then we can use that and sort of do a very super light line just so we have that and then we notice, okay, that's where the step is. So that's the step up into the, to the tractor there. And there's a bit of a step there. We'll just put that in like that. Then we have the bottom of the diesel tank is over here, just like that. Then we notice that at the bottom of the door of the tractor, that's where the top of the mating point where the trailer will have its hook up to the back. So that's there. So now all things are sort of coming together here. We have the back fenders of the of the tractor there. Like that. Then we have the diesel tank which That's about halfway on the tread of the inner rear tire. So that's there, and it's sort of at the bottom too, like that. And there's also a sort of a step on the uh, diesel tank there. And so, I think we have a really good
pencil drawing now of everything. It looks, everything looks pretty much like, again, if you're scaling everything carefully with measurements, taking, taking things slow, methodically, you'll get a really almost like a perfect drawing from something like this. If you're, again, vehicle, car, motorcycle, truck, um, anything, get house, buildings, whatever it is, this is something you can use. Just scaling things with a ruler really is helpful, you know. I often do not use rulers in my artwork. I tend to use my, just my uh, hash marks around my painting to sort of get things somewhat close, and usually that's fine. But again, if you if you need more exacting details with anything you're doing with your artwork, um, please don't hesitate. Use some more exacting measurements with rulers. And back here, we're going to put the um, grass. There's some grass back here and some trees and, and things like that. I want to get everything in here just like it is in the photograph. Hopefully I can take this and transfer it over this way. So I want to make sure that I'm level across my painting with my landscape. So the bottom of my trees should line up across. But it might be a little bit on an angle, just a touch, because remember we were talking about before the angles are radiating. So there's going to be a little bit of that, a bit of that radiating angles like this throughout the composition. Okay, so we have everything there, right at the bottom of these lights here on the right side of the tractor, the front of the tractor, the, is the gravel road. There's like a light gravel road. That's going to be white paper. We're going to leave that white paper. Um, we have the fenders here too and the mud flaps. So we have mud flaps here. How high are the mud flaps up right at the intersection of where the tire meets the mud flaps? Again, we could take our ruler, measure it. What is that? That's a half inch. So a half inch up from the bottom of our rectangle picture frame, that's where our mud flaps are. And they come out on an angle like this, on the bottom of the fender, which is up here. And that fender is actually incidentally right where the center of the hub is. So this is the mud flap here, and this is the bottom of the fender right there. And then we can look at the shadows and start to put our shadows in here underneath. No need to be too incredibly exacting with the shadows, as we know. Shadows are sort of free looking, and that's there. We have shadows under the front fender, like this. And that goes up like that to the front tire. A little bit of a shadow under the front tire here, like that. And I think we have it. And then this here, we're just going to go in like this with the battery compartment. That goes in like that. That's on an angle this way, like that. We have dark shadows in here. So now you'll look at all of your darks and your shadows. You're going to paint in your darks first here on this painting, I would hope, first. And then from there, you can let your lights sort of uh, happen as they, as you're creating your darks. All right, so we have accomplished a lot. We've got the drawing in. I think I just want to do a little more um, detail here on the windows, the windshield. I can notice that the windshield, you can see through the windshield and you can see the actual passenger side door window in this tractor, which is really cool. So that gives us a real like feeling of seeing through the picture. So let's do that. Let's get where that is. That's about halfway up like that. And then it goes this way. And then it's about a mm, little less than halfway across this way like that. All right, I think we have it. This is, the drawing is now complete. We have everything we need for the drawing. 
let's get in and get some paint on here uh, really uh, right away. And we will have a fun time putting in the paint because on the paint, putting the paint washes on because we know we have such a really accurate drawing. The only thing we have to do is just make sure we're careful with our brush strokes. We have, um, we'll mix our colors to get a really good representation of what the color of this tractor is. We're going to look at the red and say, what type of red is that? W what do you think that red is? Um, is it a cool red, a warm red? In between a cool and a warm red, is it a And you can start asking yourself, well, what color might it be in our, our regular uh, palette we use? Is that a, an alizarin crimson? Is that a cadmium red? Is that a burnt sienna mixed with a little bit of cad red? A little bit of rose matter? Maybe it's a little bit of all of those colors. Maybe we want to make it a little more exciting looking by mixing different colors instead of just trying to make it one color. Sometimes a trap is when you're trying to create a painting like this is going in and just grabbing one red color, you know, one red like a, a alizarin crimson or cadmium red and just painting the whole thing cadmium red or alizarin crimson. That's a real easy rookie mistake to make uh, as a watercolor artist. So don't let yourself fall into that. Try to tell your, ask yourself the question, how can I make it more exciting? That's what it's always about, isn't it? With artwork, it's where, how can we make things more exciting? How can we do that? How can we make things more exciting? And that's all it is. So whatever we're doing, we're going to try to make it more exciting. More exciting colors, more exciting brush strokes, more exciting composition. All these things to think about as you're creating your paintings. If you can just do a little bit of subtle excitement, where you do something a little more than just going right in and doing something that's very obvious that anyone could do, that's your key right there is try to think of that uh, as you go. And uh, I have to always uh, keep myself aware of this too because I fall into that same type of situation when I'm doing artwork for other people, when I'm doing um, uh, commission work, when people ask me to create paintings, I can fall into the thing where I get tired I'm painting a long time, I'm painting long hours, and I start to, you know, get tired and fatigued, and the next thing you know, I'm just sort of doing things, and I'm like, you know, maybe not focusing as much as I should. So that always happens when you're working with artwork. You get tired, you're working long hours, you're trying to do a lot of paintings, but always remember, try to always go back go back to the fundamentals of um, what you're learning in, in art and in your watercolors and in your painting as an artist, you're trying to always make things more exciting, but not going too far, but also too not just going with the obvious by, like I said, just grabbing one red color and painting this whole tractor one red color. Let's mix our reds, and you'll see how we're going to do that next, so I don't want to sort of keep going on and on, but let's do that. When we come back, we're going to show you how to mix up your reds here so that we have a more exciting looking mixture of reds, and then of course we're going to get some beautiful greens uh, for the background for the trees. And we're going to do some beautiful shadowing with some blues. And uh, what we can kind of notice here, let's let's use what we have here. Let's look at these colors in this photograph because they are beautiful. I've come see some beautiful blue, like I see Prussian blue in there. I see some uh, cobalt blue up here in the uh, windshield of the tractor. Um, I'm seeing some really interesting greens, some uh, uh, lemon yellow, and then some kind of like sap green, maybe a little bit of olive green in the trees back here. Um, so we, we can get into all that and some nice grays for the metals. The metals have some nice grayish colors. So we're going to put all that uh, interesting color into this painting as we go. Uh, in just a second, we'll start mixing up our colors. Try to get We'll try to get our colors mixed first, what we're going to use for the most part, and then we can just start painting and have a great time putting in our washes. Okay, all right, we'll be right back. All right, so we've uh, got to the painting portion of this video right now. So the, yes, we've done a lot of work with the pencil, carefully measuring everything as we went. Um, I apologize, forgive me for uh, going into such detail, talking a lot. I know some of you sometimes get a little bit um, weary listening to constant explanations of things and such. I totally understand that. I was actually watching a video today by another YouTube um, creator that was creating a beautiful watercolor painting, but the person was talking a lot. 
on the video and it kind of felt like it was distracting me a little bit from just enjoying the, the painting and what he, the person was doing. So I totally get that. But the reason I do put a lot of detail into explaining everything as I go is because many people do want to hear all the details of everything. So I realize some of you don't want to hear all the details all the time. Um, so I'm hoping you'll turn down the volume a little bit uh, on your um, electronic devices or do something like that to sort of like soften the, you know, the, the um, delivery that I do when I'm creating my artwork. But I do want to kind of give more information than less because there's some people I know they want all the nitty gritty details of everything. And um, sometimes I'm like everyone else too. Sometimes too much information gets me a little bit. You know, I feel like I'm just uh, getting distracted from what I'm just trying to enjoy the, the painting or the video. But be that as it may, let's continue on. I'll start to uh, get myself prepped to get the paints going here. I'll dump out my water in my water bucket to do some fresh, nice, clean, crystal clear water in my water pail, my water bucket. I'm going to use some pretty simple brushes. I'll use actually a synthetic Da Vinci number no. five synthetic brush, travel brush. These are the brushes that break down so you can actually break it down, put it in your uh, backpack, your pockets, you know, you have a front shirt pocket or your purse, whatever it is, you can just quickly use these if you're working outdoors, plain air painting. Maybe you're doing a weekend uh, excursion and you're doing some painting or on vacation or if you're just maybe in the backyard or at a park whatever it is these uh, travel brushes are really great i use them all the time they're nice and light too they're plastic handles and uh, for some reason they just seem to be really comfortable to work with so the first thing i'm going to mention here is let's do the darks first we're going to do this uh, a la prima paint uh, painting method and of course my book that i have uh, linked below Basically, my book covers the two main techniques I use all the time, which is either a la prima or the glazing method. So I use those two techniques and methods all the time with my watercolor paintings. Sometimes I'll use both of them in combination. Sometimes I'll use each one exclusively. But if you learn both of them sort of like on their own, then eventually when you're painting for maybe three to five years or more, you'll start to use them in combination uh, you know to one another and you won't be so concerned so much you'll just kind of look at a painting or look at something you're going to create and you'll say yeah I need to use the glazing technique for the most part here or uh, I need to use the a la prima method so that's kind of like why I always mention this when I mention my book because my book covers both methods and techniques that I use the a la prima and the glazing technique so I'm hoping you'll you'll pick up my book so you can kind of learn all about that and then I have a video maybe like a one to two minute video that shows you each page of my book so you see exactly what paintings are going to be in the book when you're purchasing it because you don't want to buy a book if you can't see the pages of it first and what's in there. Uh, I always got frustrated, you know, over the years, kind of going off on a tangent here, but <laughs> I bought books before in the past where I thought there was going to be all kinds of great artwork in the book and then like I bought it and it was all black and white pictures or photographs and not too many color paintings and stuff like this. So I've bought a lot of artwork, you know, and, and books, especially I've bought a lot of artwork and uh, books too as well. And sometimes I've bought books that were just like, you know, kind of disappointing because it was mostly black and white and it wasn't even that many photographs of the paintings in the book. So you'll see exactly what's in my book if you do check out the quick video. It's only one or two minutes. And you'll see that I have many, many, many beautiful watercolor paintings in my book and you can work from all those and it'll give you years of fun painting from those paintings so in any case let's get started with this here again I mentioned I'm not just going to go with one red color and say that's it let's you know go with just that no I'm going to say lizard and crimson I'm going to use a little bit of cadmium red some burnt sienna so now you can kind of see right away I've got three different reds working here a little bit of burnt umber too brown we're going to use some cobalt blue and French ultramarine blue so I'm going to use some cobalt blue here French ultramarine blue up here I'm going to get all my colors out I'm going to use some Prussian blue 
I'll put that here. Prussian blue. That's an awesome, beautiful blue. That's like a cool, really cool blue toward the green. And uh, we're going to kind of key in on these colors right away because this is what we're going to be doing first, the darks first. So let's remember that. Let's do the darks first. Um, this is some Payne's Gray, and we'll do some Ivory Black. Oh, that's some Payne's Gray there, and some Ivory Black was up on the top here. So that'll be the... We'll use some black, ivory black, Payne's gray, Prussian blue, cobalt blue, French ultramarine blue, a little bit of burnt umber, burnt sienna, um, alizarin crimson, and cadmium red. Maybe a little bit of rose matter too. And uh, so this way we have lots of different interesting colors. Maybe some cerulean blue too as well over here. Let's mix a lot of colors into this paintings to make it more exciting. So I'll just start right out with the darks. And I kind of penciled in my darks over here to start with, so I kind of... So now I'm doing the shadows underneath the fender wells of the uh, tractor here. And it's helpful if you can get some of those pencil lines in there to give you, like your, um, you want to kind of maybe, it's always helpful, maybe if you can, make those shadows in strategic areas. So like right down here by the mud flaps and the tire, I, I kind of use my pencil to sketch in the dark, dark there, because that's a really important dark right there that shadow from the tire onto the mud flap right there is kind of an important shadow. It really adds a lot to the painting. If you were to just all of a sudden paint a dark all the way down through that light area of the mud flap, that could look really awkward. So maybe key in on a few things that you can see in the paint uh, in the drawing as you're going to um, make things a little bit more accurate than you would maybe first think they might be. So here we go, more darks. Lots of darks here underneath the step and battery compartments, like that. Then we have some cobalt blue and cerulean blue. So we're going to put some of that shadow there. And then we're just going to continue right on through the painting here. We have some dark darks here along this side of the fuel tank. That's a good dark there. There's some good darks underneath the door here. Those are very, very dark, so let's get those in. Like that. And it's good to actually, wherever you see the darkest darks, get those in and then don't lose control of them by painting more shadows or other lighter lights from your, if you can isolate your darker darks, get those in and let them be as they are and let them dry actually. Because that can be a really a big help to let those dark darks dry because then you can go in and do a couple lighter values next to them without having it all smudging and flowing together all you know in, in one so that's kind of a good thing if you can remember that it's always a help to um try to let your darks dry your darkest darks let them dry first before you go in and start tying them into the rest of the washes so you can kind of see how I'm getting the dark darks in first We'll do a few of these here. So I'm just looking around the whole painting. Where are my darkest darks? Over here I see the tractor window is open. So they, 
the tractor window is left open and there's a really really dark dark there where the tractor window is left open and you can see right into the interior of the cab so that's a good thing it looks good and we have some dark there and dark there underneath the mirror there's a mirror here we're gonna leave that white paper where else do we see darks I see some really good interesting darks right here underneath the visor the visor is actually casting a shadow underneath onto the windshield and it's a really super dark dark so let's get that and look just like that like that so that's all like this is your this is your mission right now as you're working through this painting your mission is to get the darkest darks that you see in this as best as you can uh, obviously you know as you work with art you know as you work with watercolor painting or if you're even painting in oils or acrylics whatever medium you're working in or even if you're just doing pencil drawings pen drawings whatever it is or pencil sketches if you can just key in on the darkest darks right now in this painting just say I'm just looking at the I need to find the darkest dark parts of this painting first and get those in and just get them onto the paper that's a huge advantage you're going to have that'll make your painting a really you know beautiful painting because you're going to notice that if you get those darkest darks in there first then the rest of the painting you're going to you're going to key the rest of your colors and washes according to those darkest darks so you can see I'm getting like right there a very very dark dark there underneath here where the tires are underneath the shadow of this these um these fenders on the back tire there's a dark dark that goes around here like that there's a dark dark that sort of goes down in between the two tires like this like that there's a really really dark dark under the door here and on the sides of the uh, battery compartment and the step up into the tractor like that there's really really incredible darks right underneath this fender I have those in already um, there's some pretty good darks on the top of the fender there but they're not quite as dark as you could see the rest of these that we're creating right now so we will get into the rest of the the washes but the first thing is to get these really really dark darks in and I might have just added a little bit too much dark over there that's all right I don't think anyone's gonna notice really too much and then this here is really dark there under the fender and there's some really dark shadows underneath this fender here and again you can rest assured that you can always take a little bit of damp brush like you can take your brush later on dampen it up with some damp water some clean damp water and slowly take these dark darks and sort of soften them out and make them you know blend in with the other washes so that's a good thing to remember too is you'll have that advantage of doing that as you uh, work through the rest of the painting so now I'm just getting the dark darks of the shadows underneath this portion of the painting which is the front tires like that Any place else I see very, very dark darks, I'm going to try to do that. I, I see really, really super dark darks here on the air filter over here. Like that there. That's a super dark. Another bit of really dark dark there. Um, where else do I see something? I see a little bit of dark over here. Maybe not incredibly dark but that's pretty dark there a little bit of dark here where else always remember too sometimes things might look a little bit awkward when you're going in and 
putting in your darks, things might look a little bit awkward as you're doing that. Don't worry about it. Never judge your watercolor until you're completely finished with putting in all of your washes and you're completed with the entire painting. Then you can step back and look at it and say, oh, okay, I need some improvement on this part or that part or whatever. But never sort of doubt what you're doing. Just keep working on it and, and that'll be the best route to go. And then uh, we're going to do the blue over here. I'm starting to see some really beautiful blue over here and then over here. There's some dark blue. With some, so I'm going to use some uh, Prussian blue here, Prussian blue and a little bit of the black to kind of block that in there. Like that. So it's not quite Okay, so we've got those lighter values of very, very light blue, which I just basically rinsed my brush off. I rinsed my brush off. I dried a little bit of the water on my tissue first, and then I blended in a little bit of super light cerulean blue right over here where these windows are so that you can see the um, light blue, which is like you're seeing through the tractor, through the tractor, through the passenger window on the tractor, through to the sky. That's a really important thing here for this painting is that little subtle bit of um, seeing through something to give it a three-dimensional quality. So that's why we... and then we can go in a little bit later when this is all dry over here, this port portion of what I'm doing right here. When, we, when that's a little bit more dry we can add a little bit of a darker wash maybe to kind of really make that a little more uh, detailed with the dark and light of the window in the inside the cab. But I don't want to keep touching things up in here. Let's just leave it as it is and you'll see later how we're going to go in and maybe touch that up a little bit. But this is... coming along really nicely. Now we're going to start um, putting in some of the reds here. So we're going to do the burnt sienna all the reds that we have and we'll just start up here on the nose of the tractor and we notice that up here let's go very very light up there's some sunlight catching the top of the the nose of the tractor it's quite light so let's do that let's make that lighter up there you can always lift up a little bit of paint like that then as you go lower on the tractor nose here. You can make it darker like that. Mix up all your reds, get your cadmium red in there. Let's have fun. Let's make it some beautiful rich red colors. Let's not get too bogged down with worrying about what the color is going to look like. Just get some really beautiful mixtures of reds and you'll be fine. So I'm going to go right under there, like that, right into the black of the bottom of that air filter there. And you just keep working your washes. And 
I wouldn't worry too much. Now that looks pretty light now. So it's a little lighter over here. So I would start to lighten up the wash a little bit over here on the door. The door looks a little bit lighter and it looks a little darker over here on the front of the nose of the truck of the uh, tractor. So try to try to look subtly at what you're you're seeing. So you can kind of pick up on the subtleties of the uh, washes. Now the top of that air filter is actually chrome and I went over that with the red. Let's Let's try to make that, keep that red, and then keep that chrome. This is... Okay, here we go. We're going to get some of that red here. Let's do some cadmium red. Sometimes you'll... You'll change up your colors a little bit. Like that. And then you'll come over and grab some more over here. You know, try to you mix around your colors. You know, you add some here and some there. Uh, we're gonna do some more up here. That's white, so the sun visor is is white on this tractor. And then I'll do some more red here. This is the back of the tractor, and this is the red over here. enjoy the different colors and get some shadows and lights in there too. We want to get some different uh, that's a, the mirror there right there's the mirror. We're gonna leave that white paper. We'll put some blue on there for shadow color. It's a little bit blue up here and then it's like that. Okay and then we're ha we'll have some orange. We need some orange for those lights. For the running lights. So we're going to put those on there. Those look great don't they? At, at night time when the, when the big trucks, the big 18 wheelers come rolling through and they have their marker lights on the top of their tractors and that just looks great. We'll take some more, a little bit of blue here, maybe a little bit of the, the uh, darker, the, the black, just a little bit of a touch there for the uh, air horns. We can soften that out a little bit, just make them a little bit darker because we're going to do some blue sky eventually and we don't want to have those uh, air horns sort of disappear on us and we can't see them. You can always lift up a little bit of paint with a tissue. That always is pretty helpful. You can put a little bit of shadow on our smokestacks here. They're metal, so these smokestacks are metal. So if they're more toward the cool side, like the blue, blue with a little bit of warm in there, that'll be fine. Um, we have some blue here. Let's leave some white paper. Don't get uh, too... Um, I would say try to leave white paper on this painting if you can. I'm going to try to d definitely leave uh, white paper and 
warm and cool for our shadows. And uh, let's do some, let's do the front fender here. We'll take a break in a few minutes. Actually, let's take a break and then we'll come right back. That's a good stopping point here. We've done a lot of painting right now. So let's take a break and then we'll come right back. All right, we're continuing on here and um, we're just really, uh, at this point, we're sort of like 75% of the way there. We have pretty much most of everything completed. So what I'll do is um, I'm going to empty my water bucket. You can kind of see the water in my water bucket is quite murky, pretty dark and, and uh, murky, uh, muddy looking water. Let me just empty that out. A good habit is to always just try to empty your water occasionally, put in fresh clean water. Uh, sometimes it's more important than other times. If you're going to do a really light wash, like a sky wash or um, some really light washes, you definitely want to change your water and put fresh clean water in there. If you're doing darker, darker washes, sometimes it's not as important. But in any case, I always try to change it out as I'm working here. So we are sort of, again, pretty much 75% complete. We, our main goal, we're, we're painting a la prima right now. So a la prima is basically when you're going to go in and paint everything at one time and you're not going to be really doing much like light washes first and letting that dry and then going, going over that with darker washes. A la prima is basically you're going in and just doing the painting, starting uh, the painting in, at one point and just working the whole way through. And most times you're going to want to start with the dark. So with a la prima, as far as the way I've learned it from like uh, great artists um, that have taught me, they say to start with the darks first and then just go from there and paint all the way through the painting until you're finished. So that's what we did here. We went with the darkest darks first and now we're sort of like finishing up the painting. Uh, with our medium tonal values. So we, we got our darkest tonal values in first. Now we're going with our medium tonal values, which is kind of like the red of the tractor. And we'll put in some greens for the grass and some trees. And we'll do some more shadowing and some more grass and things like that in the foreground. And we have a, a few more shadows, shadows to do in the foreground. So let's do that. Let's get some shadows in here. Um, but I definitely see that we do have some dark dark darks here. So I'm going to start putting a bit of dark darks here on that front fender. So here I'm doing the front fender. And I'm trying to look at the front fender and actually see that there is a light that kind of wraps around here so let me not just paint over everything and think I'm getting it done correctly. Let me really see what, I, what I'm looking at here. So it's a, ma a matter of careful observation, basically. Like that. And then... Just take that dark and kind of work it up there because you can see it goes pretty much right around there. If you have to lift up a little bit of paint sometimes to rescue a spot, you can do that. Like that there. So I get that little bit of that light rim going around the where the top of the tire is there. So you can use a tissue sometimes. And then we have... Uh, the tire here. And the tire back here, we're going to have some shadow there. And then you 
usually what I do is I don't get too overly concerned with too much detail, especially if it's something like a tire over here. So it's easy to get worried about something like the tire back here, but I wouldn't worry about that tire back here. So the best thing I think to do is don't don't concern yourself too much with let's consider this the main focal point so the main nose of the tractor and the door this is like the focal point here so this tire back here and the fender different things like that don't don't get too overly concerned with that and try to like do too much detail with that just get a few details on there and then just let it be like we're doing right now and I think that's it we, that's all we needed to do for that back tire and then uh, we have lemon yellow here lemon yellow and some green let's do some uh, sap green maybe like that and we'll start getting some of that back here And maybe some, uh, again, some more sap green and maybe a touch of cerulean blue. What I'll do is I'll consider this cobalt blue, maybe a little bit of cobalt blue. I'll consider, and then there's some uh, Prussian blue. Let's consider these trees in the background back here. Very, very uh, cool so that we feel like they're in the distance back here. Like the last thing, the last thing we'd want to do is make these trees back here like really bright green or something like that. Like, you know, really like, <clears throat> let's keep these light like this and cool. So we want to keep this kind of cool back here. Kind of counterintuitive if you're looking to make green trees, but the more cool you can keep those trees in the background here, the, the better you're going to success you're going to have with feeling like those are back in the distance in the painting. Because we always remember that in the painting, you have to try to do things that are going to help you to accomplish the task of making your painting three dimensional and have that three dimensional quality to it. So we always kind of know that in the distance you know, purplish and, and cool colors. You can even add a little bit of purple to that. You know, and that gives you that quality of far distance. Like this. And then as we do this over here, more green, yellowish green here. We have some a little bit of green there. So there is some green grass over here. A little bit of weeds and grass, and it kind of ties in with the shadows a little bit there. A couple of taps. I would use a little bit of splashing technique here, like this. A little bit of splashing technique there. Why not get a little bit of splashing going on there? And that is good there. You can also blot up a little bit with a tissue if you want to. If you find there's anything that is too looking too much paint or too dark a value. You can do that, add a little bit that, of that in there, the uh, or blot up a little bit. You can add a little bit of green um, and yellow to your wash on the tractor, just to kind of like indicate like, yeah, there's some color that is 
from the grass and the greens sort of bouncing back up and influencing some of the colors in your, your painting. And that will actually uh, work good to getting the look you want. And there we go, we got that front fender. Then we have a little bit of the dark gray here for the um, for the front grill. I'll do the front grill sort of like adding in some parallel strokes and parallel marks. So I'm making some parallel marks on the page. You can add in some bits of darker wash maybe in a few spots like that then the Peterbilt insignia is up on top here It's a little bit darker, so you can add a little bit of blue to the red, just to get a little bit of darker uh, quality to that there, like that. Um, there's a little bit of um, a little bit of shadow there. Uh, a little bit of shadow on the metal there. like that and then we have some of these lights here in the front let's try to maybe just carve around these a little bit no need to make a big deal of the, the lights here uh, we have some darks here for the uh, the wheels for the rims of the tractor so I'll just do a couple again I'm not doing every single like I'm not trying to copy this part the little small um, cutouts in the, uh, the the rims so there's some small oval cutouts on the rims I'm not trying to do it too carefully I'm trying to just leave it sort of uh, very very carefree and then we'll do some lug there's some lugs around the so I'll just try to do a few of those uh, there's a little more shadow here so maybe that goes like this Okay, so we have the tractor now really coming together. There's some shadow over here like this. On the other side, there's a light on the other side. It's kind of got that same parallel line across it like this and like this and like this. And then we'll do some more red just to kind of maybe... Do some more there we go I think that's really good I think we did talk about how we were going to maybe take a little bit of dark darks with blue and um, maybe a little bit of red too And we were going to try to create a little bit of that darker dark back here on the uh, inside of the interior of the cab. It's a little bit darker back in there. 
like that. Then we wanted to have a little more red right here for the center of the windscreen like that and I think that's really going to be the uh, I'll put a little bit of blue in the sky cerulean blue just a little bit I wouldn't go with too much sky wash at this point there's so much interesting detail on the uh, the tractor uh, here that we have painted that you did, we wouldn't want to go with too much detail on this part so we just add in some scrub in some little bit of cerulean blue a little bit of um, um, Prussian blue because we did use Prussian blue in a number of areas so that's we want to add that in too and you just kind of add it into the top areas and then it gets lighter as it goes toward the closer down toward the cab and the mountains in that that area there so we can add that in the blue sky You can add in a touch of orange or yellow ochre um, for the the horizon line here. Like that, you can add a little bit of orange in there. Then you can blot up a little bit too. I would definitely keep that sky really, really diminished. I wouldn't do a lot to the sky. I'd keep it very, very low key, diminished looking. The only thing I think I would do now at this point is I probably would um, use a touch of white, titanium white, to just fix up a few spots that I see that are maybe we could kind of fix up a little bit. So I'll take the titanium white with a little bit of yellow ochre so if you can see this, I just have a little bit of a titanium white in a tube like this. And then I take yellow ochre and I put just a little bit of the yellow ochre in there. Just so that that white becomes a little bit warm looking as far as the color temperature of the white. So that it's like kind of a, like a warm white. And I use the point of my brush. And I'll just add in a couple fix up spots where I think I might have needed a few spots where I needed to add some whites to fix things up a little bit there I think I needed some there uh, along this uh, stack here the uh, smokestack I wanted to add some white there <clears throat> I think that looks pretty good though overall I need to add a little more shadow there. Um, what else do I see? I added a little more red there by the fender. And then what I'll do is I'll take some fresh clean tissue like this and just kind of, you know, maybe just do a quick blot there. Just to blot that up a touch there. Um, what else do we need here? A little bit of shadow under there. Now we need some shadows here from the uh, the mirrors here. So let's do that. A little bit of purple mixed in with a touch of the black there. I think that's all we would need there. And then we'll just do a little bit of that. Very very light though. then you can always blot up a little bit. If it doesn't look good, if you do some shadows and all of a sudden you say to yourself, it doesn't look too good, then that's at the point where you 
blot it up and just say, okay, it didn't didn't look good. But you quickly do it. All right, so we have pretty much our finished painting. Now, as we look at it, we're pretty much happy with this. It's uh, We have some shadowing. Um, we might need a little, I would say maybe there's a little more shadowing here with some purple. There's a little more lighter value there with some shadowing. Like that. Looks good there. We have a little more shadowing maybe over here. Like that. But other than that, I think it looks good. You know, we might put a little bit of white light over here. Some white light over here. Maybe we need to add a little touch of red over here just to straighten out this line a little bit. Sometimes you'll have a line that doesn't look too neat. So you can always add in a little bit of red or whatever color you might need to straighten up a line a little bit. Maybe we need a little bit of red here. And we damp, we just rinse off our brush, take off some of the water, and just use a damp brush and just sort of blend that in. Maybe the, the door is a little bit lighter up top by the handle where the door is there. And maybe it's a little more red down here. But we do have some good variation with the colors of the red. And I think we have everything pretty much looking. Looking good. All right. All right, so we've had a fun time doing this recreation of a beautiful tractor, a Peterbilt tractor from the 1970s. Um, you know, you always want to Recall that when we have a commission painting that someone asks us to create for them, we want to make sure that we're doing the best possible job we can. And so if we take our time and really focus on the details of everything, we will, chances are we're going to actually get there. We're going to be able to capture that real realistic look of, of what we wanted to do. So thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. I'm hoping you'll subscribe below on the right hand side below. Thumbs up. I hope you'll give me a thumbs up if you really like this painting. If you want to see more paintings like this, the best way to do is give me a thumbs up. Then I know that you're really enjoying this type of content on my channel and you want me to do more uh, paintings like this. But of course, uh, subscribe so you don't lose track of us and uh, uh, you know of my channel here. And thank you for coming by. And if it's your first time here and you're saying, wow, I've never seen this artist before painting on YouTube. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're, you're at the right place at the right time. Just please subscribe if you, if you'd like to, um, you know, that's your choice. But when you subscribe, all that's going to do is basically just keep you in contact with me and what we're doing here on my channel, painting, drawing and painting and watercolor on a consistent basis, doing every type of, uh, imaginable subject matter that, uh, you can, you know, fathom in watercolor. So we're doing paintings like this of a beautiful tractor, a Peterbilt tractor. Maybe tomorrow we're going to be doing flowers. The next day we're going to be doing a seascape with sand dunes and beautiful uh, plants and, and wispy grasses. Maybe another time we're going to be doing a figure painting or a portrait painting. And then after that we might do a city scene. So we're doing everything watercolor. And each time we come to the table here and work, we're always covering the fundamentals and basics of watercolor. And that's my goal, always my goal is to kind of just cover the basics of 
methods and techniques of watercolor for you so that you learn it, you see it, you hear all the terminology, you see how we're doing everything on this video, and then by that you will actually, over time, be able to, you know, really create beautiful paintings in watercolor and you'll be absolutely uh, thrilled. So that's my goal. <laughs> All right. So happy painting, everybody. Enjoy the watercolor journey. We'll, before you know it, we'll be back again, painting another uh, wonderful painting here together. Okay. So uh, a good evening, a good day, a good morning, and we'll see you very soon.